Hey everyone, Adam here in the AeroWorks Workshop, and today we're going to be talking about tools that you're going to need to build your home-built aircraft. Now you see a variety of tools here in front of me. We're going to get into what each of these ones uh, is used for. But before we do that, let's talk about the three major types of aircraft that you may be building. The first type is all metal construction. This is typically either flush rivets or pulled rivets. And these are aircraft like Zenith aircraft, Vans aircraft, and so on. Your second type is gonna be your traditional tube and fabric aircraft. This is similar to something like the Kit Fox or a Rans aircraft or a Super Cub. And then your third and more exotic type of kit build aircraft construction is composite construction. This would be something like a Lance Air, Glass Air, something in that nature. What we're going to be talking about here today specifically has to do with all metal kit plane construction. So please note that the tools that we show you here may not be suited for all aircraft type construction, but for the majority of kit planes that are being built using all metal construction, this is your basic tool set that you're going to need. So let's go ahead and dive in, take a closer look at what you're going to need, and we'll get started right now. All right, guys, let's talk about a few of the tools you probably already have in your toolbox or workshop. One of those is going to be a good, high-quality set of screwdrivers. You want to make sure you got both Phillips and regular and that you have a variety of sizes. You're going to want to have a nice socket set, some open-end wrenches, crescent wrenches, things like that for small hardware and bolts. You want to have a set of files. Now you can buy these in all different lengths and sizes and small and large, but you're going to want to have a good flat file as well as a file that has a rounded side to it. That's going to be useful for filing out rounded holes and such. You're going to want to have a good uh, box knife of some type, possibly even a scraper type knife. These are going to be handy for taking off stickers, opening packages, etc. Another thing you probably already have is a lot of Sharpies. You may, you may not have a lot of Sharpie, Sharpies, but you're going to need some. These are going to be useful when you're marking metal, drilling holes, marking lines, etc., labeling parts. If you have stickers that you're going to remove, you're going to want to write the part number on there so you don't mix up parts. But get yourself plenty of Sharpies. Now we're going to talk a little bit. Everybody has drill bits probably at home if you have any type of a workshop. But in, in the aircraft industry, most rivets are done by a certain size drill bit. Um, and there are going to be specific sizes and a style of bit that you're going to use for most rivets. And those are going to typically be your number 20, 30, and 40 type drill bits. So when you order your kit, make sure you find out what size holes and drill bits are typically used in that kit and order a variety of those so you have plenty on hand. We're now going to get into some of the more advanced tools. I do want to add one thing, of course, everybody's going to have a drill of some type. Um, a regular cordless drill will work fine. However, with sheet metal, there are some advantages and disadvantages of using a cordless drill. Now, obviously, an advantage would be you have a battery. It can be portable. You can get into a tight spot and not have your hose hanging out. Uh, the downside is they're a little clunky. They're a little bit bigger, as well as they don't always spool up as quick as an air drill does. Now, if you notice something like this Sue Tools air drill, this is run off of air, off your compressor, not only is the size quite a bit smaller, but when you run this drill, it's immediate. So if you're on a hole and you're holding that drill right on your, your marked dot or your punctured uh, hole line, as soon as you squeeze that drill, you're going to be drilling a hole. And as fast as you can hit the reverse, you can pull it right out. So this is very handy and, and most aircraft factories are using air tools like this. We'll talk a little bit more about the types of compressors you should use as well uh, when we get to more of the air tools. But I wanted to mention the drill type because most people do have a cordless drill of some type, which you can use, but there are some better options. All right, let's talk about a few of the specialty tools that you may have never even experienced or even seen, and you definitely don't have them in your, your toolbox. One of the things you're going to be using a lot of in sheet metal construction or aircraft aluminum is something called Clecos. Now these are temporary fasteners. They're color coded according to their size and they're going to be used to hold sheet metal together, to hold the skins on the ribs, to hold rims on, ribs on the spars. Um, and they're used all throughout the aircraft. Now most manufacturers, if you contact them, they will tell you how many of each size you need to build 
the respective kit that you're building. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a thousand of these and a thousand of those. You may only need 200 of these or 400 of these or 10 of these. So you want to make sure you check with your kit manufacturer before you order those. Now something you're going to need along with your Clecos is a Cleco plier remover or a Cleco pliers is what they're called. Now these come in a couple varieties. They come in just good old cheap metal ones. They have some that are a little nicer with rubber handles, kind of save your hands. They also have electric ones, which, you know, if you want to go that route, you can do that. But they simply grab onto the rim of the Cleco, you squeeze, and the center section, which is made up of three pieces, actually extends and makes itself smaller, fits in the hole. You then release, the parts widen up, and that's what holds your uh, metal to your rib or what have you. So you're definitely going to be using Clecos, you're definitely going to be using Cleco pliers, and again, whether you're using a cheap less than $10 pair, or a little bit fancier pair, or an electric pair, that's totally up to you. Some of the other tools you may be using um, and you may not have used, one of them is a deburring tool. Now whenever you fasten sheet metal to uh, its respective part, you want to make sure that the parts are deburred. Now we deburr parts in aircraft construction by either sanding the part, grinding the part, or deburring it with a tool like this. And this tool simply goes in the hole, you, you spin the knob, and you take off that little bit of uh, burr or rim that's created when a machine punches a hole or a drill bit goes through a hole and pulls it out. You're always going to be left with a little bit of shavings there and you can't have those shavings between your pieces because that can promote deterioration, potential cracks, plus it just doesn't provide a very nice fit. So whenever you're applying sheet metal uh, that has holes that have been drilled or punched by a CNC machine onto a respective uh, skeleton structure, you wanna make sure that both parts are deburred on both sides, whether that be sanded, deburred with a tool, et cetera, before you fasten them together. Very important. We do have some other tools. This is a, uh, an edge reamer. So if you have sheet metal that has, again, that sharp edge, you can pull this along the edge and basically the sheet metal runs between the V and this takes off that little bit of a lip that's typically caused by a machine press that's punching out flat material. When that press goes through the material, it leaves a little bit of a rim on one side and you wanna make sure you take that off. Some of the other tools you're gonna be using are things like aviation snips. Now everybody's, you may even have a set of these in your shop, but you'll notice that they come in variety of colors. Now this isn't just because they want to get fancy and have all different colors, but these tips are called, or excuse me, snips are called aviation snips for a reason. And if you notice, we have red and green. And what do we notice about that with aviation and nautical type activities? And that is that we have a port and a starboard side. So your left one is for making those left cuts your green one is for making those right cuts, and your yellow pair is typically made for making, or used for making straight cuts. Now they could also be blue handled, yellow handled, or just some generic black color. But when you see green and red, that's typically for making that sharp corner, either left or right. Now if you've ever used a pair of scissors and you switched hands and they don't seem to cut correctly, that's the same scenario. And when you're cutting and trying to make a precision cut, with your tin snips on a piece of sheet metal, you wanna make sure that you're cutting it the right direction. All right guys, let's talk about the tool that hopefully you'll be using a lot throughout your build. And that is the blind rivet puller. Now specifically in our build, we're gonna be using blind rivets throughout our build. Now there are other types of rivets, like solid rivets and rivets and, and such that require a bucking bar and a rivet gun. However, on our aircraft, we're gonna be using blind rivets, also known as cherry rivets, pop rivets, and so on, but the true term for them is called a blind rivet. And that is because you're able to drill a hole through material and fasten the rivet by one side, meaning that you don't have to be on the inside of the aircraft to secure the rivet like you do with a solid rivet. Now, you've all probably seen one of these pullers like this, you simply insert the rivet, you squeeze a few times, and the rivet expands and it's done. One thing to note that aircraft rivets are not the same as the ones you might find at your local Home Depot or Lowe's. These are actually specially made for aircraft usage. Uh, they do come in a variety of styles and sizes. Typically they're aluminum with a steel shaft in the middle. 
And what happens is, is the tool pulls the center shaft inwards, mushrooming in the inside, and that creates a tight fit between your parts. Now, when you're doing small pieces or pieces that are hard to get to, you can simply use a hand riveter. But if you're doing several thousand rivets, you're not gonna wanna do those by hand. So you may wanna use something like a pneumatic river, riveter. Now this one will secure rivets very quickly. Um, they come in various tip sizes and companies like Zenith Aircraft will actually provide a tip that bevels the top of the rivet, giving it a more aerodynamic head shape at the top of the rivet. Now, pneumatic riveting, again, is great if you have a compressor. If you don't have a compressor, there are also other options like an electric rivet puller. Now, this one is made by Milwaukee. It does have various tip sizes. It comes with all those. However, if you are gonna be using it for aircraft use, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your appropriate rivet size tip on there. But this one, you simply put the 12 volt battery in, give it a pull, you pull one rivet. It's not quite as fast as the pneumatic riveter, but if you're working at home or up late in a garage and sound and having a compressor running in the background is a concern of yours, then you could go the electric route. I will make sure and put links to all of these products down in the description. And, and know that most kit manufacturers either will sell you a toolkit to build their aircraft or they will recommend websites uh, th that you can go to to buy tools, toolkits, individual parts and pieces and so on. Uh, companies like Wix or Aircraft Spruce, those type companies do sell toolkits as well as most of the manufacturers will also sell some type of a bundled uh, toolkit specific to their aircraft. So you don't have to buy a lot of extra stuff um, that somebody else might be selling because you're probably not gonna use that on their aircraft. All right, guys, now a few other items that are handy to have in your workshop that aren't necessarily needed right away are a drill press, a small vise, and some type of a belt sander or disc sander. The sander comes in handy for shaping small aluminum parts, uh, taking off burrs and things from cutting at the manufacturing. Of course, the vise is great for putting aluminum in and bending in if you need to make a sharp 90 degree bend. And then the drill press is gonna be handy for things like spars and landing gear, things where you have to make a precision straight down 90 degree perpendicular hole and you don't wanna take the chance of doing that manually. All right, guys, now last but definitely not least is a good quality compressor. And the two things you really wanna think about are the volume, the tank size that it can hold because that's gonna determine how often it's running and filling back up. And then the second part of that is how loud the compressor is. Now, many people building an aircraft at home are doing it off hours, after work, in the evenings, the weekends, and the last thing you want is a compressor running all night long when the family's trying to sleep inside. So take a look at the different manufacturers. This one here happens to be a Cobalt. I picked it up at Lowe's. It actually uh, brags itself as having quiet technology and being 80% uh, quieter than other uh, leading compressors. Uh, this one is very quiet. Now I did have a, a Craftsman before and that provided up to 33 cubic feet of tank space, but it was super loud. I mean, the thing sounded like a jet engine running. This one here, you can actually work while it's running, but it doesn't need to run that much because it has a large tank. But something to keep in mind that don't always go out and buy the cheapest one. Look at that decimal volume that the actual uh, motor puts out when it's running. That's gonna be the most important to you when you're working late at night in your house. Now, before we take off for this video, I wanna talk about one last thing and that's organization. One of the biggest things that can slow you down with your kit build is not having everything organized. When you get your kit, you're gonna get a ton of parts in a box. A lot of times they're all wrapped up. It's gonna take a little while to inventory that box and that kit, get everything laid out, figure out a system that's gonna work for you. You might wanna pick up some cheap, you know, garage type shelves and put the certain parts for certain parts of the aircraft, organize them out, as well as we're doing things like using these parts bins here to organize our Clecos, our rivets, all the small bolts and parts, drill bits, things that you, uh, you don't wanna lose and you're using a lot throughout the build. You can also easily slide the tray out, 
bring it with you, work on a part, and then put it back, or even bring the whole rack with you because it's on wheels. Uh, if you don't want to go that big, you can also get something like one of these screw organizers. This is one we picked up at Menards. Uh, again, a couple latches here, and then you can put, again, your small parts, your rivets, clecos, what have you in there. That way, uh, if somebody bumps something or knocks it over, they're not all over the floor, and you've got it with you wherever you want to go. So again, guys, this was a brief overview of just some of the basic, basic tools that you're going to need when you get started building an all-metal aircraft. Now again, I want to say, this is by no means all of the tools you're going to need, and we didn't discuss every single little part and piece. We will be doing that, however, throughout the build series. So as we use tools in the aircraft build, you're going to see those used. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about why we're using it and what it's used for. And we'll have links to everything, of course, in the description. Please, you want to like and subscribe to this series. It helps the channel out, helps us get uh, out there more, out in the community. Uh, and again, keep checking those links below because we're going to have a lot of discount codes to uh, sponsors and affiliate links that are going to help the channel out, going to help you out, uh, and we're going to have a great time building this aircraft. Now again, stay tuned for the next build video uh, coming out here shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about aircraft kit selection. How did we get to where we're going now and uh, why might you choose one over the other? And we should be taking our first kit delivery here very soon even as soon as next week. So you're going to want to make sure and like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified because you're going to want to be there with us as we take delivery of that kit. We're so excited. We're getting ready for this. So uh, again, thanks for watching the video, guys. I want to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment down below what tools work for you, maybe links to where you bought your tools. Help each other out uh, because we're all in this together. Uh, again, we're, we're building airplanes, we're uh, experimental builders, uh, and I want to leave also links down below to places like EAA, uh, AOPA, sources uh, that can give you a lot of great information both uh, on the web and in your local areas too. So again, make sure you, uh, you look down in the links uh, below. Again, please help the channel out, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.